In this sequence, we are going to learn birds that you will most commonly see in community proper, near all the buildings and heavy traffic paths. We'll start with the eastern Phoebe and one of its lookalikes, and then head into an exploration of the multifarious Pisidae family, whose main cohort are the woodpeckers. So let us begin. The eastern Phoebe is a loner bird, foraging and hunting alone. It will reuse old nests when feasible. Its range has expanded with human land development, often nesting on bridges and buildings. In 1804, the eastern Phoebe became the first banded bird in North America, thanks to John James Audubon, the naturalist and ornithologist for whom the Bird Conservation-Oriented National Audubon Society is named. You will often see eastern Phoebes along the fence lines of the gardens and pastures waiting for insects. They are common all throughout community and along the loop road adjacent Lake Creek. This footage was taken on a stroll to the creek. The Phoebe's large gray brown head is a good clue for identification, and their consistent tail bob, or tail wag if you prefer, is a unique marker that makes it easy to differentiate from the very similar eastern wood peewee amongst other lookalikes. Seemingly subtle at first, the tail bob becomes a dead giveaway for the experienced birder. The eastern wood peewee comes about a month and a half after the eastern Phoebe in the course of the warm season. The wood peewee is in the Tyranidae family of birds, commonly known as the tyrant flycatchers. They prefer insects, but will also eat seeds, fruits, and even small vertebrates. The eastern wood peewee has distinct white wing bars in contrast to the Phoebe. Here we see an eastern wood peewee in the upper garden. Oh, a territorial challenge. Who is this intruder? With a tail bob like that, we certainly know an eastern Phoebe when we see one. All right, let's move on to the Pisidae family. Here we will find woodpeckers and a single sapsucker. The Pisidae family are characterized by zygodactyl feet, which means they have two toes facing forward and two facing back, making foraging on trees much easier. All of these woodpeckers are quite common at Eastwind and live on the land throughout the year. If you pay attention, you will undoubtedly see one or many of them on a daily basis as you walk the paths. I left out the red-headed woodpecker for now. You'll find it in the video about birds that live close to the creek. First we have the red-bellied woodpecker. Its size and orange streaks atop its head are an easy giveaway. Seeing its orange belly down between its legs is more difficult and requires the right light. Do not confuse the red-bellied woodpecker with the red-headed woodpecker. Here's just a couple more photos because this is one of the most common at Eastwind. Next we have the northern flicker. There is a wonderful phenotypic variety in the northern flicker with two main morphs, the red-shafted as well as the yellow-shafted. Red-shafted flickers have little red mustaches, while the yellow-shafted flickers, which is the only variant you will see in this video, have a characteristic red stripe on their nape. These are the least common woodpeckers you'll see at Eastwind, and to see a red-shafted flicker would be a great find. It has been shown that the quality of diet fed to nestlings affects T-cell-mediated immune response and in turn correlates to brighter pigmentation in the flight feathers. The pileated woodpecker is easy to identify simply due to its size being at least twice as large as any other woodpecker in the Ozarks. Both sexes have a fantastic crown of red, and the male has a red mustache in addition. These birds can really peck. You can often see them 20 or 30 feet in the air moving around the land. They have a flap, pause, flap type of flying pattern that makes them swing up and down as they move. The next two woodpeckers can be a challenge to differentiate. We have the hairy and downy woodpeckers. Downy woodpeckers are much more common, about 6 inches, and have a shorter beak. The hairy woodpecker is less common, about 9 inches, and has a longer beak, like a long hair. Another distinguishing mark is a black spur that goes from the shoulder onto the chest in the hairy woodpeckers, but this trait is rarely, if ever, seen in downy woodpeckers. The females of both these species are black and white, while the males will have a small splash of red upon their head. And finally, we have the sapsucker. The yellow-bellied sapsucker is not a woodpecker. It is a sapsucker. Come on, bro. It winters in Missouri and is not nearly as common to see at Eastwind. The male has a bright red crown and throat and clearly defined white and black streaks. The sapsuckers have more of a dotted or blotchy black and white scheme to their feathers as opposed to the more evenly defined patterns of the downy and red-bellied woodpeckers. Here we see a juvenile. 
Just like most woodpeckers, this sapsucker can drum on hollow trees and other objects to communicate messages long distances. I hope you enjoyed this footage. This is part of a series of wildlife videos that focus mainly on birds with a couple of other surprises, so please be sure to check them all out if you have an interest.